Whenever, whenever the chair is ready, I think we have time and we have quorum. Okay. And if the, if he's ready in the back. Okay. Okay. The, the video, the video is not showing yet. Do you, do you want me to start, Spencer? Well, Wait. One second. Okay. I wanna see why the video is not coming up. The video. Doesn't that usually? Well, are you talking about the left-hand side where it shows live for? Yeah, they can they can see it. Okay. Uh, I don't know what what can they see online. Um, go up to the uh, you can ask. go up to the view of the room, uh -huh. and click that, and do pin pin, pin. and it will there you go. Boom. Thank you. Yep. Okay. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> it's, it's good to have a technological team here. <laughs> Takes a village. That's right. Uh -huh. That's right. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting to order. Um, so the meeting for the Accessibility Advisory Board of Feb February 2nd is now in order. Um, the chair requests staff confirmation that the Kansas Open Meeting Act required notice has been properly provided. It has. Thank you. And I'll ha ask you guys to do a roll call for us. Commissioner Oaks? Here. Is this microphone working? Can I can hear you, but it's not working. Testing. Okay, there, there it's working. Go. All right. Commissioner Oaks? Here. Uh, Commissioner Cumberland? I do not see him today. Commissioner Eklu? I do not see her today. Uh, Commissioner Finger. She is also absent today. Commissioner Rickman. Here. Commissioner Kilmer. Here. Commissioner DeGenhart. De Commissioner Kirkhart. Here. And Commissioner Griffin. Here. All right. Um, I'll We'll move on to approval of the minutes from the November 3rd meeting. If Does anyone have any um, comments or questions about those minutes? And if not, I will ask for a motion that we approve the minutes. All motion to approve the minutes. Second. It's been moved and seconded All that we approve the minutes from November. All in favor say aye. 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 All aye. opposed say aye. And it's been um, approved now that um, those minutes have been approved. Um, in the area of new business, um, if there are any um, uh, hearing items from the public. There are none on the agenda. Okay. And then administrative items is the next item um, to it's time every year to discuss our goals accomplishments and completion of the annual report form chair oaks if i may have the floor i you've been provided in your packets a proposal these are just proposals that we kind of put together based on past and what we kind of see as a staff going forward but it is up to the commission to decide on what you want to present as accomplishments and goals so we've kind of drafted something for you to start with and a working point. Um, I don't know if everyone's had a chance to see those in, in the record, but just, just in the interest of everyone else participating, maybe I'll go ahead and, and kind of go through those real quickly, what we've presented. Thank you. Um, the first three, the accomplishments, we presented three, um, participated in the 2002 Fair Housing Seminar with a booth to describe the attendees, to the attendees, the purpose of the board. So we had presence at that seminar this year and, and presented a booth with that. And um, I don't, were you there, Commissioner I was, Oaks? I was there. You there for part of it, but our staff was there the whole day to, to pr promote this board. And I did feel like it was worthwhile, so I'm hoping to be there for the whole time. Great. We'd love to have you month. next time, okay. or in April, April 28th, right, Spencer? Yep. Okay, April 28th. Um, that said, then the next goal was increased accessibility of the Salina Community Relations Division webpage by allowing easier access to the intake form, um, and then we could even add on to that just the whole access we have a top of the page if you will now an icon at the top of the city's homepage that takes you directly to us and it has the universal um, 
universal sign that you have the the wheelchair and the blue emblem, the universal sign for disability awareness. And so that's on the top, very top of the city's homepage now. So you can click on that and get to the access to the information, um, which was as good as we can do. We're working on a new web page for the city, which hopefully will roll out some more. But that was a quick fix that we could make it more accessible this year. And we've really tried to work on the back pages of that. And I feel like the input from this board has helped with that. Um, the last one was the notified city engineers of specific storm drainages that posed as a danger to blind and low vision individuals navigating within the community. Um, and that was brought to us by Commissioner Finger. I believe brought some items to our attention and we had the city engineers come and speak about it. We, we had a private meeting with, with the engineers based on Commissioner Finger's concerns. So I think that was an accomplishment to move some of that forward. And I don't know if you have any other accomplishments that you see or if you want any corrections or additions. Again, this is, we kind of put something forward, but it is really your commissions, what you see. So. Um. Um, and I think our survey was under the la the previous years. It was, yeah. and so we had it on last year. Kind of came was, close. <laughs> yeah, I know it yeah. was. It was, and it was transition with us and everything else. Yes. And I had to go back and look, but it was last year's. Okay. So I, I did not include that one this year. I couldn't remember when we did that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, was like, I, yeah. it was all kind of new for us, so yeah. it, I did go back and look, but that was last year's. Okay. Uh, we did talk about it at the first meeting then in that, because Spencer kind of summarized it at that first meeting. So I don't know if we want to, we could add something more if you chose on that, but. Um, since we did, I, we we reviewed the results of it then mm -hmm. at our first meeting. Why don't we Why don't we just okay. put something to the effect that we reviewed the results of it? Because we did put a bit of work into developing that, and certainly okay. Spencer put in quite a bit of work in making it um, available to the community to be able to complete. Okay, so reviewed the results of the. Um, Community Accessibility Survey. Thank you. Is that, that, yeah. that sounds good to me. If anyone else has anything else they want to add, I'm making notes, and hopefully Spencer is too. Um, yep. <laughs> Are there any other accomplishments you'd like to record for this year? It says three to five, so we we have the, the minimum and now above. But I think that's good. I, I think it's yeah. hard for this board to make a lot of accomplishments in four meetings i know year. it is it's so, a challenge but i think that that's a i mean that's pretty good that's okay. accomplishing at least something every mm -hmm. meeting so okay mm -hmm. okay so we'll move on to the goals then and um some of these are based on what i know we're doing and trying to move forward internally with this area and some of it based on some of the conversations we've had so please feel free to edit or add to but here's what we've come up with Provide feedback on the accessibility of the city's new website and develop a method performing for performing annual testing and compliance checks. I know that's one of the things they recommend is that you have someone help you know audit that. It's in our contract that the website provider does that, but sometimes it's nice to have some checks. And so, um, just after discussing it with the director of our department, um, thought it would be helpful if maybe this this entity, this body, would kind of help with that on a you know maybe an annual basis um making a check of that to make sure once it's up and going right now we're still in that transition i don't know when it's going to be up we're hopeful this year but i think it would be helpful to do those checks so that we can then hold the um, website provider accountable that the things because i know that isn't the contract but sometimes it's and, and things are ever evolving in that landscape so is that an acceptable Mm -hmm. goal that everyone okay. yes and then assist with developing social networking content to reach more individuals with disabilities and inform them of available resources um, this is one we would always like help with um, if they have ideas for things to put out into the social uh, we do um, Facebook and I don't know if they do Instagram too we we don't have our own internal in our small department um, the gentleman back in the booth his department actually the the person that's so graciously videotaping for us this meeting um, their department actually has a great 
Facebook and I think it's Instagram too that we do messaging. Um, we give them excerpts of what we want, but we can always use more content, what to develop, what can engage people. And, and I think this board has a diversity and breadth and knowledge that you can maybe help us come up with ideas. Um, we do have someone on staff in our department. We're lucky Marissa's not in here right now, but she's so good with developing the visual part of it, but we have to come up with the content. And so, um, if I have some help from this board, I think that would be something that I would love the input of what you think might be helpful content-wise. And, and, and maybe along with that, um, I know as part of the survey, we developed a list of some resources. We did. And where is that available to the community now? It is on our website. Don't ask me exactly where on our website, but it's, and when I say our website, our division has a web page that's part of the overall city's, city's overall website. So our page has that information on it right now. It's not, um, and then we have it in the office okay. so we have copies in the office and we offer it if anyone comes in and they would like those resources but we don't have it beyond that i don't know if there's other information it's pretty long mm -hmm. for social media because it's i don't know help me out spencer about 15 pages 12 maybe mm -hmm. it's it's long for a social media post mm -hmm. and for that kind of content but i, I uh, wonder if there would be any value of at on a yearly basis just reviewing reviewing that seeing what is current or not current that would and be excellent those changes mm -hmm. so yeah. we could have a review of the as a goal five to annually review the, the resources resource. list mm -hmm. and it might be um, important that we touch base with the people who are posting to social media to make sure that those posts themselves are accessible um, th using things like closed captions and um, you know there's a lot of pictures out there but making sure that we use um, alt text, text to describe those images for people who are visually impaired very good point um, so I would count that along with maybe number one we could add in there um, new it's website like and social media and, and con uh, mm -hmm. electronic content it's like part of goal one and two yeah, yeah. it's like a <laughs> the accessibility yeah. of that content yeah. not only yeah. creating the content and making uh. good content but the accessibility of the content so it's and maybe and and ensuring the goal assist with developing social networking content to reach more individuals of resources and ensuring um the accessibility of that content. Mm -hmm. Do you have to be specific? Is it City of Salina Facebook page that we're posting on? Yes, it is. Um, and we haven't gotten that far to uh, to look at all that. We've just kind of been in our own. But mm -hmm. I think that's a good breadth of making sure everyone is aware of how to make it compliant. Um, I've been doing a lot of education on myself for that mm -hmm. and so I um, understand part of it I, I know what some of it is but some of it gets a little too technical for me but I do understand that we do have some resources to make it that it's sure. it's making sure everyone's doing it that way because my understanding is Microsoft provides some good good um, accessibility and so does Fox it and we have both those programs here so I do not know about Canva, which is something we like to do a lot with those programs. I need to look at the accessibility. Canva's of Canva. tough, at least at least is on it? the vision side. Okay, thank you for that. I had yeah. not looked at that. I looked at the other programs and have been trying to look at educate myself on how to make them. Um, well, I think there's just some best practices around that. So not much text in the the visual content that's on a social media post. Put all of your text into the caption so then it's able to be screen read okay or with a device or do both. Mm -hmm. or do both. an is image there a, that says is there a best practices do you have a best practices and it, it was one of the classes that i took as okay. part of that ada coordinator that so we can me? look at it yes okay. perfect and i think we um as an agency will probably have something we do a lot of trainings on, on so this in general that would be um, excellent so i would yeah. say that as a goal i know this is something we probably haven't addressed at some point but as a meeting in the future 
that would probably be a meeting that we would maybe focus on some of that and maybe focus on developing some of those mm-hmm. protocols. Um, I may be speaking a little bit ahead, but I know that leads to another one of my goals uh, is the ADA coordinator is to refresh our ADA transition plan. And that's one of the areas that our ADA transition plan doesn't have as much from when it was originally developed. There just wasn't, there weren't, the internet was not what it was. Social media wasn't what it was. So that's one area of our transition plan that needs, and it all ties together. To, to what we're discussing right now. So I see that as being a goal of these at some point in the future. I don't know, I can't say which meeting it will be, but hopefully before the end of the year. So we have three more opportunities. So, but I think those are all excellent points and we really wanted to tap into the resources that we have on the board and I consider you guys all very knowledgeable resources. So that said, um, going back to the wording on goal one, I have added in new website and electronic content um, or media, electronic media content. And then goal two, I've added to the end and assuring this, uh, reading the same as it is and just adding the the clause and assuring the accessibility of the content to, to capture, I think. Is there anything else that would capture it at this point? And then I have as written down also Commissioner Oaks or Chair Oaks um, annually review the um, what did we call that resource guide mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. community resource guide I think is yeah, the yes. official name yeah, it is community resource guide and assist staff with updates with. Um, updating the information. Those resource guides are like an ever evolving target. It, they're a moving target all the time and that's why I think they should be reviewed annually. Mm-hmm. And so at least on that day they'll be updated. <laughs> yes, yes. So and then uh, the, the third goal, I added that as goal five just to make it easier on my editing. Um, But goal three was to provide input on the development of training materials on accessibility laws that can be used internally and externally. Um, That's one of our goals is to also start some training to do internally. Part of the transition plan again is to update training and I know working on some of that. So as we have today, trying to develop things that we can outreach and train and educate continually internally in our staff in this commission and through all the city staff. So we probably, as we develop that, we'll be asking for input. And then goal four, our feedback to the ADA coordinator, or offer, can't read today, offer feedback to the ADA coordinator on the development of the refreshed ADA transition plan. So that's one of my big goals for this year is to work on that, trying to finish getting the coordinator certification done and then that's kind of, it's been evolving. I do have a spreadsheet started, so, um, but as I was discussing with Commissioner Griffin, because she just passed Uh and is official now, certification, so I'm working on mine. So I don't know if anyone has anything else to add to the goals, any other online, I don't mean to ignore you, it's easy to overlook, anything else? I, th- I think those are substantial goals. They're okay. Huge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. We might make some progress. We might not get all completed this year. Exactly. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Anything? With that, that's all I have, Commissioner Oak. Okay. Unless, and if there are any other, they do have a, just a general, if there's any other items that we would want to add um, at the bottom that, okay. that are a goal or any other comments or, I don't know, it typically almost overlapped with goals. So or accomplishments when I saw the looked through the past ones and others, but some of them are just ongoing yeah. too. Sure. Yes. Um, do I do we need to take an action on that on this at this time or? I would say it, I don't know that it's required, but it would be nice to approve it. Okay. Kind of like the minutes, the if anyone approves officially. Okay. All right. So um, I'd like to hear a motion that we approve the. Um, review of accomplishments and goals with the additions that we have discussed 
Do I hear a motion for that? Yes. So moved. And a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the accomplishments and goals. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say aye. It has been passed. Thank you. Thank you for your help. Okay. Next item on, on the agenda is some preliminary discussion items and there's nothing listed at this time. And so um, we move on to some unfinished uh, or other business and we have a presentation from um, Commissioner Griffin on transportation services provided by OCCK, which we discussed last time and kind of asked her to do this. Yes, yeah, sure, thank you. So we do have some slides. We'll get those up for everyone and hopefully. Great. Okay. Uh, so what I have today is what I call Transportation 101. So this is a presentation that I do throughout this community, throughout the other communities that I work with on public transportation. I just customize it a little bit depending on what area that we're in. So it's going to be pretty broad. There's a lot of slides. Um, feel free to ask me any questions as we go through. So my official capacity is mobility manager for CTD7, that's Coordinated Transit District, so North Central Kansas. I've been in this role or in public transit since 2016. Done a lot of really fun things over those past six years. So um, helped to establish 81 Connection, Kansas Rides website, Can Cycle Bike Sharing Program, Can Connect, Mobility Week, Moving Kansas Network. And what I really do is a lot of social media, marketing, public relations, networking, and travel training. So I talk a lot, um, talk a lot about a lot of different things. <laughs> yeah. So this is just a quick map of the state of Kansas and shows that we have six mobility managers currently in place. I was the first one that was full time. So I'm that star that's kind of in the north, um, furthest to the west. We've got another one in Manhattan. We've got one in Wichita, one in Topeka, one in Lawrence, and our newest one is in that very far northeast corner based out of Hiawatha. So the ultimate goal for KDOT and all of the transit agencies would be to have one star in every one of those um, districts. So you can see that we do have some good coverage, but we still have a ways to go. So transit is very important to Kansas, as you all know, and it's for these reasons. So of course, access, independence, uh, employment, education, opportunity, healthcare, social connectivity, which all leads to hope. And public transit provides a $5 to a $1 return on investment. So everything that we're investing in our communities in transit gives us that great return in a variety of ways. So people staying in their communities, um, property tax stays there, we have driver salaries, they spend their money, we purchase gas and tires and maintenance and there's just a lot of different things that figures into that return. So about transit in Kansas, so we have about 140 agencies across the state that provide different levels of transportation services. We have over 800 vehicles and we give more than 10 million rides annually. That includes both urban rides and rural rides. Even though we have all of that, not all counties have transit service still, uh, especially in Western Kansas, we have some counties that are still a little bit behind the curveball. And transit is still relatively new across the state. So CityGo um, seems like yesterday that it was just 10 years old. So it's really probably about 13 or 14 years old. That's not very long when you think about transit service. Uh, so we just will continue to evolve as the years go on. <coughs> Next slide. There's a lot of different transportation modes. So when I became a mobility manager, of course we had no idea what that meant. So we've kind of just been building this program as we go. I had no idea that there were this many transit options. So of course we have fixed route like City Go here in Salina. Along with that, you have to have an ADA complementary paratransit service. So for those individuals that are not able to use fixed route for whatever reason, you have to have that complementary service within the city limits. And then we also have a demand response service for public transportation. So this is um, curb to curb or origin to destination. So all of the OCCK vans that are out running around 14 counties 
you make a reservation for a ride, they'll come and pick you up. That is demand response service. That is what the majority of the services are in rural Kansas. There is also demand response for private transportation. So that's Uber, Lyft, those type of companies. So same scenario, you have to schedule a ride, they'll come and pick you up, take you where you wanna go. There's a new term called microtransit, which is very similar to a demand response, an Uber or a Lyft. It is app-based, so you can schedule your ride through your app, and the public transportation provider will come pick you up. Usually it's defined by a zone, so either, um, oh, like a boundary of a city or a neighborhood or an employment center would have a, a boundary around a microtransit area. Um, but you, it's, it's demand response, it's real time, so you could schedule a ride right now and they will come and pick you up. You don't have to schedule it 24 or 48 hours in advance. So that's kind of the new thing that's happening. The only uh, microtransit service, and I take that back, there are actually two microtransit services in Kansas now. So Johnson County has been operating one uh, for the past couple of years, so they were the first. And then Topeka just launched their microtransit um, January 1st, so they're just a month in. So you will see more and more microtransits coming across the state. And then you've got human service transportation. So any human service agency that provides transportation to their clients, um, so that could be Presbyterian Manor, could be Central Kansas Mental Health, you know, could be any agency like that that has their own transportation services. You've got volunteer driver services. So if you have an agency um, that knows that they need rides but they don't have paid staff, you can use volunteers to do that. City of Wilson actually runs a very cool volunteer driver service here in Kansas. There's carpooling and van pooling. Um, so that's exactly like it sounds. An agency owns vehicles, um, but then the people that are needing to go to the same place, mostly for employment, they would carpool or van pool in that agency vehicle. Ride matching uh, was kind of a thing when Craigslist was a big thing, so you could put um, an ad on there and see if you could find someone that was going to the same location that you were and you could ride together. Vehicle sharing, exactly what it sounds like. Your vehicle sits about 95% of the day, so when you're not using your vehicle, someone else could be using it. You can share costs uh, and make that a less expensive option. Of course, bike sharing and scooters. So there are so many things that list keeps growing. Um, we've got autonomous vehicles. We've got whatever that next futuristic thing is. <laughs> so this list keeps growing and we just keep learning um, about what we need to do next. Now I'll speak specifically about OCCK's transportation options. So you can see this is a pretty extensive list as well. So they run CityGo, they run regional paratransit in 14 counties. Uh, in 2019, they started Go Abilene or merged with Go Abilene. It was existing prior, and now they run that within the city limits. In 2021, they did the same thing with Concordia. They offer their Medivan program, non-emergency medical transportation for Medicaid recipients, 81 Connection, Can Connect, Can Cycle, an airport shuttle and then travel training. So you all are getting travel trained today. So when you go home, you can tell people that you you have been travel trained. <laughs> next, next slide. So then I'll go a little bit more into the specifics and that's what this packet of information is for. Um, you don't have to get it out right now, but when you if you go home, you have a lot of reading material that you can look at. You can share that. If you need more brochures, uh, we've got brochures for every single thing. If you need brochure, more brochures, you can reach out to me and I can get those to you. So a little about CityGo. It was started in 2008 um, and it has five different routes. So red, blue, purple, green, and yellow. Serves about 80% of Salina with almost 200 bus stops. There are six transfer points, which means that you can transfer from one color bus to another. Um, so if you're in the north end of town and you need to get to Walmart, you're gonna have to change buses. It's managed by OCCK Transportation Department with the City of Salina and KDOT, Kansas Department of Transportation as partners, and all of the buses are wheelchair accessible. It runs 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Friday. There are peak times and regular times. So in those shortened peak times, 
Uh, there's two buses run and they run every 30 minutes. And then the remainder of the day, we have one bus running every hour. They also run nine to five on Saturday with just one bus every hour. And at this time, we do not have any Sunday service. The fares are pretty reasonable, so it's a dollar per trip. If you need to ride all day, it's $2. Uh, and then you can get a 30-day bus pass for $35. They used to be called monthly passes, but just at the start of this year, we've changed them to 30 days. So it doesn't have to go by calendar month. It's whatever day you buy it. It's good for 30 days from that. So that's a little bit of a change. And then a couple of years ago, we started the Get On and Go Youth Pass. So for $10, kids seven to 18 can ride three months for ten dollars and so we're trying to encourage that next generation of bus rider to ride the bus be familiar with it uh, because it is a life skill that you'll use if you live anywhere else uh, in the world basically next slide we started in 2021 using Token Transit. So it is an app that you can download on your phone and you can use it to pay your fares. So you no longer have to carry cash or tickets. You can use your phone to show the driver your digital pass. Can um, riders purchase tickets on at the bus site or do they have to go to another <coughs> site to purchase tickets? So it depends. So they can only get a daily pass from the driver so they can pay their $2, put it in the fare box and they'll get a daily pass. Okay. Any other option, they'll have to either get in person at OCCK's transportation office or do it online or use their phone. Through the phone. Yes. Um, so that's exactly, that was exactly this list oh, right I'm here. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay, so next slide. <laughs> Uh, we also have a website, salinacitygo.com. It's full of information. Um, when I started, it was one page with no clickable links, and now it's, I don't even know, hundreds of pages with lots of clickable links. So you can find pretty much any information on there that you need. Next slide. We have also added trip planners. So now you are able to use uh, Google to plan your trip on CityGo and 81 Connection. There is a direct link on the website, but this is what it looks like if you go to Google Maps. So just like you're planning your trip in your car, you can now plan using transit. The only difference is you have to click the little train icon that's up at the top in the middle. Um, once you click that and say where you are and where you want to go, it'll give you all of the different routes. So there's a lot of different options for getting around Salina on the bus, and you just pick the option that works best for you. Next slide. We've also got this on Apple Maps. So if you have your iPhone, um, you can use Maps on there. Works exactly the same. Put in where you are and where you're going, uh, and it'll give you all those different routes. You do, again, have to check the little train icon um, versus the car. And then this past year, we uh, started working with the Transit app. So Transit app is a worldwide app. So if you go to New York City or Washington, D.C., you'll have the Transit app on your phone. You can also use it here in Salina. So I think that's pretty cool that we can do something like that. So instead of having to have our own app, we were able to put all of our information in there. And so you really just have to have this one app on your phone. Uh, at some point, we will have <coughs> fares integrated into this, so you won't have to have tokens separately. You should be able to pay your fares. That's a project that we're working on. Next slide. You were, uh, we were out there, and then I went to there. Yeah, this. Go over to the next one? Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's not. It's not on the screen. There, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Um, so do we need to go back one? Yeah. One second. There we go. Oh, I don't have one. There we go. Um, so the next service is regional paratransit. So like I mentioned, they cover 14 counties here in north central Kansas. It's origin to destination. It's on demand. You do have to call ahead um, to make your, to schedule your ride for that. They run it basically the same hours, um, so 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Depending on what time your trip is, you may have to leave a little bit earlier. Next slide. 
Fares are similar, but just a little bit more. So it's $2 per person each way in Saline County. Outside of Saline County, it's $2 per person plus 10 cents per mile with a minimum of $3. Uh, personal assistance ride free, kids 10 and under ride free. They do have to have car seats in those. Uh, and again, you can pay your driver the same way with cash or coupons or your phone. Next slide, please. Here's the information to schedule that ride. So you can call the office or you can use the online form. You do have to have your ride scheduled by 4 p.m. on the day prior. Sometimes they'll have availability, most of the time they do not. And you can schedule your rides up to two weeks in advance. And the purpose of these rides, does it have to be a medical nope. or just any person? Wherever, wherever you need to go. If you okay. need to go get your hair cut, if you wanna go see your friend, you need to go to the liquor store. I mean, it's literally, it's whatever. <laughs> and that happens a lot. So can it's you, literally. Uh, can you take me through the McDonald's drive through they, <laughs> they certainly could. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so now we're talking about Go Abilene. So I mentioned that that's within the city limits of Abilene. It runs just the same demand response. They run eight to five, Monday through Friday, $2 each way. Uh, those have to be called or you have to call and schedule those in advance also. The next slide should be Go Concordia, same exact thing within the city limits of Concordia, eight to four Monday through Friday, $2 each way, call and schedule in advance. Medivan is a great program, a partnership with Salina Regional Health Center. You can get non-emergency transportation to and from uh, Salina Regional or any of their affiliates at no cost. And we have a lot of people that take advantage of this. Uh, it's especially recommended for anyone that's going to Tammy Walker Cancer Center. So that way they, they don't have to drive, they don't have to worry about that, and it's at no charge to them. Medivan covers that same service area. So does it go in the county? It doesn't just stay in the city? Yeah, no, it, anywhere in, in those Sorry. 14 counties. Okay. So we've had um, a lot of people from North, um, Jewel County even, they'll go get them and bring them down to the cancer center, for example. <clears throat> uh, so same thing. This one uh, has a little bit shortened hours, so 8 to 5, because generally that's when the doctor's offices are open, Monday through Friday. We do off hours uh, if needed call and schedule exactly the same way and those rides can be scheduled up to two weeks in advance. I think this was just this past year, I don't know, all of my time is running together. So I don't know if it was this year or last year that we announced uh, free rides to Salina Family Healthcare Center. So that's a good partnership that we have going with them also. And it's is that on city go buses or um, not on city go it that one is on the paratransit okay. regional dis demand response yes now non-emergency medical transportation for medicaid works the same but it's a little bit different so um it's only for those that have medicaid through can care Medicaid will pay for transportation to medical appointments, uh, pharmacy, prenatal, grocery stores. It just depends on the provider and what they will pay for. You have to give at least 48 hours of notice in advance to the can care provider. And then the can care provider arranges that transportation with OCCK. So on the back of their cards is a phone number that they have to call. They have to tell them, hey, this is where I need to go. This is when I need to go and they have to ask for OCCK to be the provider. But then those rides are given at no charge. You're good. Uh, and then 81 Connection was started in 2017. It's a fixed route from Belleville to Salina three times a day, Monday through Friday. We have stops in Belleville, Concordia, at the Highway 24 Junction in Minneapolis and in Salina. And again, you can use Google or Apple to plan your trip. Next slide. Uh, Here we go. Um, so this is the fare chart. It is in your brochure that you have. Actually, that's not the fare chart. This is the timetable and the fare chart. Um, so the timetable is listed in there. So we have a southbound link and we have two, a southbound link that starts in the morning and then the afternoon we have two routes that crisscross each other. Uh, so that shows you all of the stops. So in Belleville, um, two stops, 
in Concordia, there's four stops, one at the Highway 24 Junction, one in Casey's. And then when you get to Salina, you can get off at either 7th and Walnut or at Walmart. And we did that on purpose, so then it connects with CityGo. Um, and then at 7th and Walnut, you can also hop on a can cycle bike. You can hop on Can Connect. So you really can get pretty much anywhere um, by taking 81 Connection and then coming into Salina. Uh, fares are very reasonable on that, sorry. Uh, the fares are $1 from city to city. And so it's not stop to stop, it's city to city. So from Belleville to Salina, it's $4 one way, which is pretty reasonable. You probably can't drive there for that. <laughs> Um, Can Connect is a, a new program that we started. Uh, it's a pilot program with Sunbelt Solomon, which is a, a larger employer in Solomon, and they were needing to get employees from Salina to Solomon. And so we do this route twice a day, um, every day, Monday through Friday. And you do have a brochure about that also. Can Cycle was started in 2019. Uh, it's a, a funding partnership with Blue Cross and Blue Shield and OCCK. We have 80 bikes on 16 stations in eight communities. So Salina, Minneapolis, Concordia, Belleville, Mankato, Beloit, Lincoln, and Ellsworth, and soon to be a couple more. Uh, you can find more information about that at cancycle.org. It's $1.50 for 30 minutes, or you can get a $30 annual membership that gives you unlimited one-hour rides. You do need to download the Movatic app on your smartphone, and that's how you check out the bikes. We have a partnership with the Salina Airport, so we can get you to or from there for $2 fare each way. Um, there is a shuttle waiting on a certain flight when, when it comes in, otherwise you do need to call and make reservations. And then again, travel training. So this is one of the classes that I have. Um, this is an overview of all of the services. I can also give you a more specific class about CityGo or about 81. I can do those for individuals, for groups, in person, virtual. Uh, you guys just let me know what you need and we can get something scheduled. And then we do a lot of community service, work with a lot of different partners throughout the community. This is where just a few of the things that we've done. Uh, we have done bus shuttles for Discover Salina, the River Festival. We've offered uh, free fares for 305's enrollment and their back to school fares, election day. And then we also do a little bit of community service with our holiday give and go. And then this is um, Kansas Rides. This is our statewide transportation resource. So before 2016, this did not exist. Um, so we've really come a long way. You can go on here and you can find information about all of the providers within the state. And we are continually working to add more, uh, make it more functional. Hopefully we'll have a, a statewide trip planner on there in the next couple of years. So. If one thing that you guys remember from today, it would be this, Kansas Rides, anything that you need to know about transportation, you can find on here. Here's a list of the providers in the counties that I work with. You've also got a brochure uh, in there that shares that information as well. So if you have friends or family in any of these counties, there is transportation available and I can assist with that. It likes the slide, evidently. <laughs> There's not too many more, I promise. So if we lose our participants, Spencer. I think it'll kick me off Zoom. I don't know if the internet bugged out or what. Mm -hmm. This side's working, but the, the actual Zoom itself isn't working. There it goes. There we go. Yay. That's right where we need to be. Uh, so some additional projects, and that was kind of some of the questions on the survey that I saw. So 
always looking at how we can expand regional routes. So we want to have connectivity all across the state. So not just within North Central Kansas, but East, West, North, South. Uh, and then expanded service options. So like I mentioned, microtransit is kind of one of the things that agencies are looking at. So how can we expand the coverage area? Uh, so overnights are important for people that need to get to and from work. Weekends are always a challenge. How can we use microtransit as a tool uh, to help with some of that? Volunteer drivers is something else that we've been looking at to fill some of those gaps in service. Um, and then another thing we've got, so 7th and Walnut is what we consider a mobility hub. So you've got CityGo there, 81 Connection, Can Connect, and Can Cycle all within that one half block area. Um, and so designating that as a mobility hub, showcasing what's there, talking about other uh, attractions or other services that are around that area. So that's kind of a, a term that's trending across the United States. So we'll have some more information about what that looks like. And we're very... Um, What's the very strategic on where we place things, where we have stops. So each of the communities that are um, along the 81 connection route are also mobility hubs. So we make sure that we have bike access there. We make sure that those other providers um, are working in that same area so that everything is connected and that you don't get somewhere and you can't go any further. So that's uh, mobility hubs. And then I like to talk a little bit about other services um, that we don't necessarily work with these, but they're options because we want to make sure that we have a fully connected mobility community because uh, people need to get a lot of places. And so Beeline Express is an option that can get you to Wichita. Those are the bigger Greyhound type buses that you'll see. Uh, they leave fairly early in the morning. There are a couple of taxi companies that you can use. We have Uber and Lyft here in town. Um, I like to include the city of Salinas hike and bike map because it's important to have pedestrian and bicycle access. Like I mentioned, Craigslist ride sharing. Um, veterans can get rides with the DAV down to those clinics. Uh, they for sure go to Wichita. They might be able to get you to Junction City or Topeka also. And then driver safety programs are important too for um, that next, next set of drivers coming up. You can follow Salina City Go on social media. Uh, it's all things transportation for OCCK, also Kansas Rides and Can Cycle on Facebook. And we also have a texting option for service notifications. So if we get bad weather, we can send out a text message to let people know closures or changes of hours or different things like that. So we ask people to sign up for that texting service. And then this is just a list of all the places that you can go to find additional information about what I've talked about. Um, so Salina City Go, Kansas Rides, Can Cycle. You can call the office either locally or with their 800 number. And you can even call 211. They've added a lot of information about transportation on there as well. So that's what I've got. So thank you, Michelle. You're that welcome. Was, wow, that has grown. There is a lot. Ooh, yes. I feel trained. You yes. great. You are <laughs> trained. <laughs> did after that presentation, do we have any further questions? I know there were some questions. Uh, did she answer everything? I tried to send her in advance what we what I, we pulled out of the surveys mm. so that she could cover it. But I want to. I I am so impressed with this training and then also with the willingness to train users mm -hmm. to use the system yes um in my previous life before i retired i tried to um take students on the buses so that mm -hmm. they could learn about a transportation opportunity mm -hmm. and it's not as easy as it looks it wasn't as easy as it looks yeah. and so i'm really thrilled that the experts are willing to train people in using it yes and we so the city go class that i have is really covers the basics mm -hmm. it is fairly complicated like once you get in it but once you do it a few times then you start to figure out kind of the ins and the outs of it right. um, and then it's not only important to use here but you know anywhere else that you go in a bigger city exactly. 
they use transportation and sometimes that's the only option. So then it kind of helps to have that background knowledge of I can use it in Salina, but then I can also transfer that knowledge to somewhere else if I go. Exactly. exactly. There were two questions that um, came up for me. And sure. I work on public transportations in multiple different cities, and Salina is always one of my favorites because it's the most um, comprehensive, I guess, for um, Kansas. Um, one question is, is there any chance of discounted rates for people with disabilities who are documented non-drivers? Like driving is just not an option. I know that's available in other cities. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if that's something Salina had considered. We've talked about it off and on. We haven't done anything with that I can bring that back to the office uh, and bring that up again to see if that's something that they can do um, and then the other question is um, you know is there kind of a time frame for all of these stops I know some of them are just like a sign along the road and some of them are really great covered shelters like I'm thinking the one in front of um, the high school is beautiful covered shelter with a wonderful crosswalk and yes. all of that kind of stuff um, where or if at all is there a timeline of making more comfortable shelters I don't know that they have a set timeline it really just depends on their funding of how many they are able to convert from just a bus stop to a bench um, with a pad to a shelter so it really just depends they try to do a few a year based on budget um, sometimes we can apply for grants to get additional stops put in it really just depends if there are some that you have suggestions for that would be maybe higher on your priority list you know you're able to email me those and I can share those with them uh, and then it also depends on the location of the stop some stops just are not able to be any more than a sign uh, there has to be access and everything has to be accessible uh, for for wheelchairs and anyone else like that so there's different criteria there's quite a few in residential neighborhoods. There are. And so, I mean, that would make sense. Yeah. You know, like, that's not really public property. I mean, it is, but it isn't. Yes. And so <laughs> they try, and they try to... put a bench in somebody's yard. They try to be very good neighbors yeah. about that. Yeah. That makes sense. I just finished this wonderful book. It's called Walkable City. Mm -hmm. And um, it's amazing. It's talking about how transportation just could change everything as far as, like pollution and accessibility and yes. property values and just how walkable cities are thriving way yes. more than cities who are so sprawled right we yes we would love to have a walkable city i love it <laughs> the, amount, the amount of work that you guys have done is very impressive and my experience um is that the drivers and the riders are just so welcome yes. and help and just welcoming and helpful and I've had very positive experiences. Good. Thank you. I'll pass it along to the team also. Mm -hmm. The drivers are great. Perfect. I've every per, you like youth I've ever worked with, they're like, I'm too scared to ride the bus. I'm like definitely just not. talk to the bus driver. Yes. I mean like yes. you don't have For to sure. talk to anybody else. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the I've done the iPhone thing mm -hmm. with that with the Apple Map. It is so good. It is ride to this stop. Mm -hmm. Get on the purple bus or you and, know yeah that it would is be so great. cool. Like it tells you exactly where you have to walk to, mm -hmm. what time the bus will be there to get you. I, it is it's awesome. That's amazing. Is that the transit app or is that no? The, that's on like just an iPhone Apple Map. Nice. Yeah, mm -hmm. just like if I say I want to go to get my hair done or whatever, mm -hmm. from where I'm at, if I like let it track my location, it will say, "Okay, your closest bus stop is wherever it is." So you have to walk to there, mm -hmm. and then the bus will be here at whatever time the bus will be at that stop. It's so cool. It is. Oh. It makes it so that, easy. That would make it so easy. It yes. is. And that's what we worked really hard to make that yeah. available. Um, the kind of the next piece of that is having real time information. So exactly where is the bus? How many minutes will it be at the stop? That's kind of the next level. Kind of like an Uber. Oh, like the pizza delivery guy. Yes. Yeah. So uh, we're how far is my pizza? We're away? working on that. Um, <laughs> It's Do a little bit harder process. Do you um, my student to participate in an after-school activity that he otherwise wouldn't have been able to do because his mom was working and um, couldn't come pick him up from school to transfer him to this activity, and then she had to come back into town to pick him up afterwards. It just wouldn't work. So um, because of that opportunity and the convenience of the buses, he was able to do an after-school sport that he wouldn't have been able to do otherwise right. that was located away from his high school. Love That's to hear awesome. that. That's, awesome. That's amazing. So, Kylie, can, do you mind if I reach out to you? We, we're trying to 
to document some of those stories about some of yeah. those passengers. So I'll reach out to you. And his mom is super great. Um, he might even be 18 and be able to speak for himself now. Okay. Um, but I could make a contact with him. Yeah, that sounds great. I'll reach out. Thank you. That's an awesome story. It is. Yeah. yeah. That is cool. That's accessibility, yeah. right? Yes, there. right. And it's a success story. Yes. I mean. mm -hmm. So. All right. Um, do you have anything more, Michelle? Or? I, I don't. And I thank you for bringing all the information and yes. your presentation. That, that was very good. Um, the next um, item on the agenda is a public forum. Do we have any information from public forum? Well, we do have a person in the audience. I don't know if does, if he's interested in speaking or not. We don't often. OK. okay. So, <laughs> so we You're have welcome. no other we have no other members. I see no other public forum. OK. And then um, so then I will ask for a motion to adjourn the meeting. Our, and our next meeting is in May. Yes. And I did. Spencer, did you write down the meeting date to tell them for sure? May f first Thursday of May. I'm not sure. So I'm going to assume May 4th because it was May 5th last year. I just happened to That's see that. Assumption. So yeah. first Thursday, around May, May 4th. I just is, wrote May. Is that right? <laughs> first, <laughs> just the first May. Thursday of May is May 4th. May 4th. That's it. So, we'll, so <laughs> I, I um, let's have a, a motion to adjourn the meeting until May 4th. I will move to adjourn. All right. right. And I know that it's just kind of a little bit out of order, but just remember April 28th, so be before the next meeting is the Fair Housing Seminar. Okay, and that was really worth going to. I like I said, I I intend to uh, attend more of that this year because I I found that very interesting. <gasps> good. So, good. Excuse me. So will you send something out something? Spencer? Yes, we can we'll send out a reminder to all our board members. Okay. We'll send to the other one. We'll just do both boards. Okay. Okay. Sounds Sounds good. Good. All right. So we have a motion to adjourn. Do I hear a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. We are adjourned. Thank you.